Hello everyone, this is Mike Quincy connecting the light. Uh, my guest today is Rahasia Poe. He wants to talk about his book called To Believe or Not to Believe, The Social and Neurological Consequences of Belief Systems. Uh, in particular, we both want to talk about part three, which is titled Rewriting Human History, which gets into the archaeological finds of the past century and interviews with a number of people on what the Vedic literature has to say about the topic of extraterrestrial intervention into our bloodline. So, uh, Rahasia tells us that he believes the consequences of our religious and national belief systems in light of the fact that our religious beliefs date back to the Iron Age uh, has certain consequences which we're going to talk about. So after that introduction, welcome to the program, Rahasia. Thank you for having me. Well, it's, it's, uh, it sounds like a very good subject with plenty of uh, mileage in it, as one might say. Now, I think it, it probably is best to start off with just giving a little outline on the first part of your book, bearing in mind that we're going to go to part three. So, how does it build up to part three? Well, actually, it's the social and neurological consequences that actually led to part three. But what started this was when I was about seven years old, in a Bible school in West Virginia, you know, I, I noticed a lot of inconsistencies, even as a seven-year-old, um, like God attempting to drown us all just a few chapters after he was well pleased. And it was these kinds of incongruencies that got me started at a really young age. So I started asking questions and mostly questioning people's answers. And it's been a lifelong path for myself. And the social consequences... Well, let's face it, the Inquisition, the Crusades, the burning, and even the more recent times, the occupying of foreign countries. Because remember, we're talking about nationalistic ideologies and religious beliefs. So, yes. go ahead. Yes, uh, I think that, that must cover that part of your book very adequately. And I must say, I tend to agree with you. And in fact, you've... Uh, touched, I know, upon the Anunnaki, the Sumerians, and Nibiru, and it seems to me, having read a lot of uh, Seturai Setsin's books, that the Anunnaki are reptilians that came periodically to the earth uh, on the on Nibiru, and they falsely presented themselves as gods to the Sumerians, and I think this uh, accounts for the false god that one moment can be happy and the next minute, as you said, wants to sort of drown everyone. Now, is that the way you also see it? Well, it's pretty close to it. Uh, if, if we're to believe the uh, Sumerian clay tablets, basically what happened is the same thing that happened to El Cortez. When he landed upon the shores, he had no idea that they would be recognized as gods, but quickly seen the advantage of being recognized that way. And from the early talks of Inky and Enlil, a couple of the uh, brothers, they yeah, seen yeah. this as an advantage. They, they also thought it was strange because in the Anunnaki language, they don't even have a concept for a creator god, which actually leads me to believe that maybe as we evolve as a people and as a society and as human beings, we eventually evolve and realize this, this is truly a mystery and to try to encapsulate it with some belief that some figure or personality created all this has really kept us from thinking and delving into the mystery deeper. Yes, I think you're, you're right. And as you said there, if, if they haven't got a word for God, then that rather suggests that they wouldn't accept that concept, as many of our own people do. But if you think in terms of God as being the essence of everything that exists, uh, then I, I, I feel that's the better way of looking at it. But what is your own opinion about God or whatever energy people believe it is that has created all that is? But I think this is where I get in trouble with all the different polarized groups. Because yeah. 
somewhere in the middle there's a truth. I, I have atheist friends, I have religious friends, and I don't fit in either group because there does seem to be a creating pattern, a force underlying all of manifestation. And this has been going on ever since the very, very beginning. If, if you'll notice in the evolution of matter, matter has come about as a chaotic mess in the very beginning, the, the Big Bang, you might say. But soon after that, we, we see the coming together and the emerging of a pattern into atoms and cells and molecules. And each level is built upon the previous level. And now we're at the level of planetary human beings being the accumulation of all the previous levels. And if this continues as it's continued for the last 15 billion years, then the next step would be for human beings to come together to make a planetary mind. So in that sense, I, I think there almost has to be a creative force, whether it's self-conscious or not, this is, herein lies the mystery. In your book, uh, you have said that we are on the verge of taking a step forward in our evolution of spiritual consciousness, and that fits in very well with the belief that we are, in fact, in the process of ascension, and there will be a very sort of great leap forward very soon. Is that again something that figures in your thinking? Yes, and my whole focus upon beliefs is the fact that most beliefs are divisive and conflictive and oftentimes dangerous, especially in a society with advanced technology. Because you have to remember, it hasn't been that long ago, 100, 150 years, if you really wanted to wipe out a whole population of people, you had to get a huge army together with all kinds of armament and logistics. Mm -hmm. But now all you need is one person with a suitcase bomb. So yes, I, think, yes. I think the time has come to pay a little more attention to these Iron Age beliefs that we've been building our whole empires around and not questioning. Indeed, Indeed. yes. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. Uh, but I would like to just look back on something else you commented on, because you have said yourself we are all connected to... Uh, a giant or a great energy field and I think you were questioning whether indeed the same as I was that this energy field is what we call God I think you refer to it as the zero point field yes I, I think uh, it's just a matter of definition we could call it God but God has so much baggage put on it I'm not too sure that works anymore we might call it uh, universal being universal consciousness uh, an underlying source of energy, a pattern. We're, we get into dangerous territory when we try to encapsulate it in uh, a definition, I think. Mm -hmm. But the strange thing is, is when we're, when we're talking, like you and I are talking here, the strange thing about this is we both know what we're talking about, really. Mm. But we, we can't put it into words always. Would that be correct? Yes. It's very difficult to put it into words because when we do, we divide it. And the truth of the matter is, is we're probably so much a part of that pattern, that field of energy, that we are the energy. And we have to remember, even in some of the, the texts that we're questioning right now, like the Bible or the Koran, even in the Bible says that we, we are one, we're part of this. Ye two are gods, even as I am. It's spoken yes, by some of these masters throughout history, but what happens is when a society, without the spiritual evolution or level, gets involved and starts rewriting everything, 